And good morning from Tuscaloosa, Bryant Denny Stadium, where today number one ranked Alabama welcomes Nick Saban's alma mater, one and two Kent State out of the MAC. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Hey, everybody, good morning. Welcome. Tom Hart alongside Heisman winner Andre Ware. As we get set for this one, our focus is on Alabama's freshman quarterback. He hit his stride last week in a big comeback against Ole Miss. Yeah, young, dynamic player, Tom, who can just do it all for Alabama. He did it last week in their come-from-behind win against Ole Miss with his legs. 122 of his yards came by the quarterback designed runs. He did it inside, he did it outside, has the ability to hit the big play at any time. Today, he'll, his, his, his skills will be from the passing game, but last week he was dynamic. 146 yards of all those yards on the ground. The first quarterback under Nick Saban to rush for 100 yards. That's in 23 years as a head football coach. It was also the fifth most rushing yards by an Alabama quarterback in their illustrious history as a program. Jalen Hurts, just a freshman, will get plenty of snaps and reps today, seemingly, for Alabama. Kent State won the toss. They've elected to defer, so Alabama will receive to get us going this morning from Bryant Denny. Injuries will be an issue today for Alabama. We'll cover that in just one moment. Including our Darius Stewart, who's normally on the return team, along with Eddie Jackson. Not today. Garrick Dieter is back with Xavier Marks. Dieter, the transfer from Bowling Green, where he had one heck of a career with, with Bowling Green now, an Alabama Crimson Tide member. And a short kick and a fair catch taken by Alabama down at the 30-yard line. Nick Saban told us yesterday his team still has not played a complete game here early in the season despite being undefeated. And for more on that, let's take you down to the field as we say good morning to our analyst, Cole Kubelik. Tom, Nick Saban wants to see this team get off to a good start. That's going to be offensively. I want to see what the identity of this Alabama offense is and if they sort of morph into what they will be in the future this season. 14 zone replays. Jalen Hurst provided three runs of over 25 yards in those zone read plays last week against Ole Miss. They don't have the bell cow at running back that they've had in seasons past. This might be a, an offense that runs through the quarterback. All right, Cole, thank you. And with that, two starting wide receivers today. They start with some jet sweep action and the give to Damian Harris, who picks up four on first down. Jalen Hurts, 6'2", 209 freshman from Channel View High School in Texas, where he played for his father, the high school head coach. He's been responsible for six touchdowns thus far early in the season for Alabama. He did not start the season opener against USC. Calvin Ridley with the carry on the end around, and he picks up seven for a first down. Najee Murray, the Ohio State transfer with the tackle, as we see Alabama's starters on offense. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, highest rated receiver in last year's class, the last two weeks, set it on fire. 17 receptions, 210 yards, and two touchdowns. This is Harris again. Harris tripped up as he gets to midfield, a gain of nine on first down. James Alexander the stop. Kent State is a good defensive team. They had a great game against Penn State to open the season. Yeah, Nate Holly, he's the leader of their defense. Career tackles, 362. He will hit anything moving. Out of the pistol, once again on the ground. Harris taken down in the backfield for a loss of one. Nick Cuthbert the tackle. All three Kent State linebackers now in on a stop. John Cunningham helping out as well. Very intense player. You see a lot of him. This guy's motor is it's always running, whether on the field or on the sideline. Third down two for Alabama. Hench is the tight end, enters the game. A big stop for Kent State. To Harris. And Harris picks up the first down. Running over that left side, a pickup of six. Slow to get to his feet is Damian Harris. This is a full stable of running backs for Alabama, but relatively untested. Harris just a sophomore. Behind him, Scarborough, Emmons, and Jacobs. All three underclassmen behind Harris. Yeah. You're talking about a very talented young player. Just a sophomore, but hit low right around the ankle area. Which seems to be what the... Alabama medical staff is working on. And Cole made mention of that that position. They're doing it running back by committee. It's usually two. Last year it was all Derrick Henry, but oh. in previous years it's been the two back system under Nick Saban. 
this was uh, the lead guy coming into today's ball game. And that is an ugly looking injury to Damian Harris the sophomore from Richmond Kentucky helped off the field. They'll take a long look at that right knee. He's replaced on the field by freshman Joshua Jacobs. And I say that with Henry. They had even had Kenyon Drake mm -hmm. last year to, to give him some to spell him a little bit. But well, that's a big loss if they can't get Harris back. So Jacobs first running back off the bench true freshman out of Tulsa Oklahoma and Hertz wants to throw it for the first time has all day and he swings it out to Jacobs. Makes the first man miss. Finally taken down by the second and third. A gain of eight to the freshman Jacobs, his first catch. And, and Hertz is playing with a ton of confidence. There, everything's covered up down the field. This tells me that film study, he's, he's learning the offense. Where do I check it down to when there's nowhere else to go in deep zone drops? Well, Joshua Jacobs sitting right there in front of Jalen Hertz. Nick Saban told us yesterday he thought Hertz was a little too dependent on his legs. So we'll see how often Lane Kiffin puts it on the air early in this one. Bo Scarborough now in it running back. Hertz will keep this one on the right side. A blocker in front, paving the way down to the 20-yard line. A huge block from O.J. Howard on the perimeter, and it's a gain of 17. Yeah, Jonah Williams helping out as well, along with O.J. Howard, but uh, watch Hertz here. Once he gives it, the defensive end crashes down. That's what makes the play. He crashes inside on the play fake. It allows Hurts the edge. And once you give up edge support, boy, you're going to have your way offensively. Opening drive for Alabama. Hurts again. Another blocker out there. He's got the end zone. Touchdown, Jalen Hurts from 20 yards out. Tom, two really good blocks. This true freshman Trayvon Diggs, who just moved over to offense this this week, along with O.J. Howard. Watch the block there by Howard. I tell you what, I think you could run behind a couple of blocks <laughs> like that. Well, I don't think you would ever block for me out there. So <laughs> I might throw you a block. It may not be that I'm that kind to. of block, but I'd get you one. Adam Griffith on to attempt the point after for Alabama an eight play 70 yard drive exactly what they wanted a quick start this early start this morning from Tuscaloosa Jalen Hurts another touchdown he's now responsible for seven on the season just a freshman. Last week against Ole Miss, a variation, the jet sweep worked for Alabama to perfection. Watch the, the middle linebacker false step just to the left enough to open things up for Damian Harris. They pull the guard and the tight end around, and now look at all that running room for Damian Harris. Right here, just a, a nice big hole in which to run through. It's just natural athletic ability at that point in time. We'll get back to the rest of that after the kickoff. Cavius Price, deep in the end zone, will take an either jet sweep sometimes can bum fuzzle the opponent, the defense, and it worked on the uh, opening drive for Alabama. Now, fast forward to a week later, they're going to motion down O.J. Howard, the tight end. He'll motion down inside, then come this side and throw a nice block. Watch Hurts with the fake inside to Scarborough. That's going to hold the middle linebackers. A little bit different way to get to it. It fools everybody. You get him out on the edge. He's just such a dynamic runner once he's in the open field. Same concept, just two different ball carriers handling the football. Kent State has a freshman quarterback, Miley Mitchell, out of the shotgun. And he will hand it off on first down to Justin Rankin. He's got a big gain to the outside. Rankin down the sideline. High stepping his way inside the 30. And a big play on first down for Kent State. Marlon Humphrey finally brought him down after 47 yards. Well, what a dynamic true freshman in Justin Rankin. You see the give it, the bounce, the hop to the outside, and then some speed. A bad angle by Ronnie Harrison. And that allows for some additional yardage. By the freshman ranking. Oh, what a nice start to this game for Kent State. They could have asked for anything better. It's the longest play from scrimmage so far this season. To Rankin again, this time testing the middle, and he'll find two yards, perhaps. That's one Malik Mitchell. They wanted to keep there. Everybody went crashing down inside. 6'3, 200, 200 pound freshman. 
In Cleveland, Ohio, John Hay High School. Those are his numbers for the year or last week. A nice job on the ground himself. 14 carries for 77 yards. Big game against an overmatched Monmouth squad after they opened the season with a loss on the road at Penn State and then a triple overtime loss against North Carolina A&T. This is Cavius Price trying to find the edge, and that's what Kent State will do a lot with their slot receivers. Eddie Jackson was banged up last week. He's in on the tackle there for Alabama as we see the starters. Yeah, Justin Rankin, keep an eye on him. 38 rushes, 178 yards, just under five yards a carry and a touchdown on the season for him to really improve on those numbers. He was an early enrollee, just a true freshman. They anticipated great things from him, but big start. First time out against Penn State, he had 82 yards. Third down, six. Be careful, be aware for the quarterback draw here. Four-man front with one linebacker inside. All he needs is six to pick up the first to keep this drive rolling. Play clock at one. Kent State will not get it off. They got credit for a timeout on this timeout. opening drive as they look at a Kent third State. and six. That is their first charge timeout of the half. Alabama scored on its opening drive, and now Kent State, thanks to a 47-yard run by Rankin, threatening on their first drive. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football, it's good to be in good hands. And in part by Gatorade, the proven sports fuel. Fall football Saturday here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama leads Kent State 7-0. Injuries a concern for the Tide coming into this game. For more on that, let's check in with Cole. Alabama running back Damian Harris carted off the field, right ankle, heavily taped with ice. Norman Waldrop, Lyle Kane, Team Orthopedics looking at him and then deciding to tape that ankle up, ice it, and wheel him off into the locker room. Cole, thank you. Harris, their leading rusher, better than nine yards a carry on the season. Hey, Tom, if, if Kent State's going to run the football right here, keep an eye out on this side of the offensive line, the left side behind Big Wayne Scott. He's their best offensive lineman, started 31 straight games. The southpaw with a shovel pass with his right hand to Rankin, and he gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Reuben Foster. It's a gain of two, and that will bring up fourth down for Kent State. Right, running backs, so you got to pick your feet up in the hole. He steps out of the tackle there, in a, or an attempted tackle. He's not only going to pick up the first down, he is in a foot race to the end zone. But for Kent State, it's a good response to Alabama's scoring drive. You want to put some points on the board yourself. So Shane Hines on to attempt a 38 yarder. Seven of nine on the season. Wide right. Opening drive comes to an end for Kent State. After five plays in 54 yards, 47 of those yards coming on one run by Justin Rankin. Nick Saban, the Kent State product, cut his teeth there as a coach under legendary Don James, the Hall of Famer, who later won a national championship at Washington. Asked him about Coach James' influence on his career and his life, and he stressed Coach James' organization and the process, which is a common word, of course, surrounding this program, yeah. that has its uh, basis to Coach Saban back in his time as a graduate assistant. We had a fun conversation with him yesterday. I said, what were your goals when you got into coaching? He kind of looked at me, laughed. He says, I was just trying not to get fired. So many guys in this industry from one year to the next, guys are being replaced and fired. He said, I wanted a situation where I could have some success and stay long term. Play action, hurts a wobbler. Incomplete to Ridley, tried to make a play. Now he is banged up, holding his hand as he gets to his feet. Well, and you already have Robert Foster. Sideline for today, Darius Stewart, sideline, and then now Calvin Ridley. Hoping this is just maybe the him getting the air knocked out of him here as he landed. Robert Foster, we're told, will miss today's game with a knee injury. Darius Stewart didn't finish the game against Ole Miss. He also out with a he's also out with a knee injury. Second and ten now, and they leave it on the ground for Joshua Jacobs. Jacobs going over the top of Nate Holly, gain of 16. Tell you what, offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin, he is really, really fond of Joshua Jacobs. He's a natural runner, 
who wasn't heavily recruited. They just kind of found him late in the process and couldn't believe that he was still on the board, offered him, and he decided to come right here to Alabama. Play action to him, and they swing it out to Howard, O.J. Howard, who had a remarkable postseason last year for the national champions, has a gain of eight. Well, I think he's the best tight end in football. There's some pretty good ones Wait a around second. the SEC. Yeah, if you, if you just say he's the best in the SEC, then by proxy, it's probably the best in the nation. Uh, I don't know. This kid has, you know, potential-wise, it's off the chart. So here's Jacobs again, bounces to the outside and tripped up. You mentioned Jacobs recruiting. When Alabama discovered him, he had standing offers from Air Force and New Mexico State. That was it. They wanted to bolster this freshman class when it came to running backs. And so they went out and saw him, but they only saw him playing basketball. Burton Burns, associate head coach and the running backs coach, saw him at a basketball practice with his high school team, said, hey, the height checks out, the weight checks out, the kid checks out. We don't know how he's under the radar. And now here he is playing a key role for Alabama, the number one ranked team in the country. A lot close to the, the program, Phil. He might be the best of all the backs. Play action again. Hurts flushed off the hands of Jacobs. That's one you got to have. What a play, an athletic play by Jalen Hurts. But to go back a second to O.J. Howard, the, all the measurables are there. 6'6", 251. A lot of tight ends are the focal points of their offenses. Howard seems to play in a program where there are so many weapons that he's not the focal point of this offense. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's all there. And the blocking has come along with the ability to catch passes down the field. Another mistake up front for Alabama. Alphonse Taylor in at right guard. Numerous false, false starts. Start on the offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Numerous false starts last week against Ole Miss. And this is an offensive line that they just want to see play better. Not that they're, yep. not that they're bad. They just want to see them play better. Eliminate the pre-snap penalties. I'll tell you what, the, the right tackle. Keep an eye on him. Jonah Williams. Cole, Cole and I agree. He... He is going to be a fantastic player for a long time. To the outside, complete to Cam Sims. Pickup of eight. Let's check in with Cole. I agree with Andre on Jonah Williams. He is as fundamentally ahead of the game at that age as far as his technique that I've seen at a right tackle for a true freshman as long as I've been watching football. The kid just gets it. It's not something that I think you can learn. His body balance is extraordinary. He has outplayed the All-American left tackle Cam Robinson this fall, and that's something I never thought I'd say. And I'm in full agreement with Cole. Third down. Dangerous pass caught and the extra yardage fought for right at the marker is Scarborough. And, and just kind of to put a bow on that, people are saying right now they're crazy. There's no way. Cam Robinson, This he's a top ten pick. Turn the film on. If you haven't turned the film on and you watch both guys, right tackle and left, the right tackle as a true freshman is the most consistent player up front for Alabama. Fourth and one, they're going to go for it here. Alabama's been perfect on fourth down this season. Scarborough has the first down. And for the Crimson Tide, this drive continues. Now four for four on the season and fourth down attempts. Big Bo Scarborough, all 6'2", 230 pounds of him. He's got to keep himself on the field. Remind you a lot of Derrick Henry. Big physical downhill back. He's an old school back is how Lane Kiffin describes Scarborough. Hertz wants it all. In zone, caught. Out of bounds at the one is Cam Sims on a beautiful strike that covers 31 yards. Well, he is 100% now, but he had to battle through some knee, a knee injury, suffered in the spring. And then all of a sudden, you've got all that talent in Ardarius Stewart and Robert Foster in front of you, but he is a talented player himself. Tenth play of the drive. Jacobs straight ahead and in. First rushing touchdown of the season for the freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, but what set it up was the play, the pass to Cam Sims down the sideline. All of a sudden, you can turn it around, have the luxury of a good, solid offensive line that's, that gets tremendous push up front. 
to get Jacobs in the end zone. Ten play, 79 yard drive for Alabama on the tied second possession. Here's Adam Griffith, senior from Calhoun, Georgia. Cooper Bateman on the hold, and the kick's good. Alabama has had the ball twice. Crimson Tide has scored twice. Joshua Jacobs with his first touchdown, part of this Alabama program. 18 offensive plays for Alabama thus far, 11 of them on the ground, including Jalen Hurts. There's a rushing touchdown in the Crimson Tide, effective and efficient early. And he got O.J. Howard, nice block out on the edge. We talked about that really improving as a blocker and then the pass to Cam Sims along the sideline set up a short run for by Joshua Jacobs to move Alabama ahead 14 nothing good start for the freshman quarterback Jalen Hurts and this Alabama team Andre this number leaps off the page is perfect for the season 15 for 15 in the red zone here's Cavius Price from the six will recover only in time to get popped and drilled at the 11. Oh, the tide swarm there. They're so fast and so athletic that you cannot have a false step or bobble a kickoff return. They are on you. So Mylik Mitchell comes back out with his Kent State offense against North Carolina A&T. He threw for three touchdowns. That was the most in a game for any Kent State quarterback since Josh Cribbs did it back in 2004. They've had an interesting history at the quarterback position, including Julian Edelman. Thought he might get some snaps Thursday night for the Patriots. <laughs> he might get some next Sunday at the rate uh, they're being injured. Here's Rankin on the left side. Toby Brissett was injured at the tail end of that game. No gain for Kent State. Deron Payne in on the stop for Alabama. Boy, this is a sensational defense Malik Mitchell got Kent State off to a great start along with Justin Rankin he missed one read I bet you watching the film tomorrow he's going to want back where he shows it inside should have pulled it he may have walked to the end zone Kent State likely to play two quarterbacks today including George Bullis Rankin nothing doing there swallowed up by Dalvin Tomlinson you saw that number previously Alabama so good against the run Keep in mind today, 47 of those rushing yards came on one play. And a little conservative here, and understandably so, being inside your own 15-yard line to start a drive against this Alabama defense. You don't want to make a mistake, turn it over, and or, or give Alabama a short field in which to score again. Seven non-offensive touchdowns for Alabama over the last five games, three of them against Ole Miss last week. The difference in that game. Third down nine. Mitchell the lefty. Heaves one downfield too much, too strong, trying to find Nick Holly. Tell you what, if I'm Mitchell, I'm leaving Eddie Jackson's side of it in a too deep look alone. I'll go to Ronnie Harrison's side because he's struggled the last couple of weeks in coverages. Busted a couple of coverages last week against Ole Miss. That's the side I'm gonna pick on. Is that Jackson is just a phenomenal athlete who has really become one of the better safeties in the country. Xavier Marks back to receive this punt for Alabama. He stands at his 50. Derek Adams will kick it away for Kent State. Nice punt. Fair catch taken. 41 yard punt from Adams college football continues today at 4 o'clock on the SEC Network when Delaware State heads to Como to take on Missouri and then at 730 under the lights of Lexington South Carolina takes on Kentucky in primetime SEC college football all day today on SEC Network some young signal callers in the SEC getting the job done including South Carolina's fantastic freshman Brandon McElwain who's thrown two touchdowns and hasn't thrown a pick. Jacob Eason has an early interception today for Georgia. And Georgia trailing early to Ole Miss, but the guy I think leading the way right there in the middle, Jalen Hurts, two dual threat player who can get it done, certainly with his legs, as he's already got a touchdown run in this one. And then now he's just continuing to develop as a passer. 
And they go play action. Hertz steps up in the pocket. Will now try to run for it. Hertz down the sideline and scrambles out of bounds. It was interesting, Cole, the way that play started out for Alabama. First thing I noticed, Tom, and you guys were mentioning it earlier in the box, O.J. Howard staying in on protection. I've noticed multiple tight end sets to try and help protect Jalen Hurts to give him time in the pocket. But going back to what Andre said earlier, one thing I've noticed with O.J. Howard's game, he has upped his blocking potential tremendously, and I think Mario Cristobal moving over former All-American tackle as the tight end coach has been a big reason why. Howard shifts on the left side. Hurts out of the shotgun now. Play action again. Looking for Howard. He was open early. It's tipped and he still caught it. It's a late throw but still goes for 18. Jim Jones got his hands on it from his middle linebacker spot. I'm sitting here raising my hands on the crossing <laughs> route to Howard. Give it to him. You see him crossing your screen right in the middle and he's so wide open. I wanted to throw him a ball from up here. <laughs> That's how I know a receiver's open. Andre starts waving his arms from the booth. Can't help myself sometimes. Little quarterback instincts. They don't, they don't die. Calvin Ridley on the perimeter. Hurts looks the opposite way. Gets this one out to Cam Sims. So Alabama's mixed it up here early on, Andre. We yeah. know how you feel about quarterbacks being under center versus shotgun. This drive started with Hurts under center. The last drive finished with him under center at the goal line. Yeah, it's, it's that talk I had with Lane Kiffin, right. you know, about getting down inside the red zone and, and going under center and how much I disliked it. <laughs> he just He's just humoring me a little bit. Lane gave you a look like I've heard this before. Then he said, <laughs> you sound like the head coach. <laughs> On second and four, slow developing, not for long. Joshua Jacobs fighting his way through. Touchdown for the freshman from 24. He got him in the end zone, but he left his shoe in the field of play. What a talented player. Watch the blocking up front, pulling the left guard, the tight end right there, sealing things off. And then now it's just one-on-one, -on -one, which is all you could ever ask for on a third level with a running back and a safety. And Jacobs losing the shoe right there, coming out of the shoe and still finding his way into the end zone. Four carries, 51 yards, and two touchdowns for this kid who was barely recruited coming out of McLean High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Four plays, 55 yards. Joshua Jacobs has two touchdowns today. We're not yet out of the first quarter. This young fella's running right out of his Nikes. Jacobs has Alabama on top, 21-0. Alabama has already run for 124 yards in three touchdowns in this one. We're not yet out of the first quarter, 21-0 tied. First three games for Joshua Jacobs only had seven carries and didn't score. Today, after Damian Harris left the game due to a leg injury in the first quarter, Jacobs has taken over. Just a little bit of taste. Once you taste it, you start to taste Saturday afternoons, it becomes contagious, and you want, you want on the field a little bit more so when you're out there you gonna perform a little bit better that's exactly what's happening to Joshua Jacobs right now you might look at this game coming in from an Alabama perspective and ask yourself well what's to gain well competition is so strong at every position for Nick Saban's program that you can earn snaps during the week there's no yeah. doubt about it but when you can earn snaps in a game, that carries over, can carry you through the entire season. And it helps to build depth. I mean, in a game like this, we're going to see a lot of players for the Crimson Tide throughout most of the afternoon. And that's going to create a lot of depth going forward that this coaching staff will be able to lean on throughout the 26-16 season. Miley Mitchell and Kent State trying to make something happen. He's pressured and will have to try to scramble out of this one. Flag on the play. Yeah, there's a hold. He's thrown right at the feet of about four Kent State offensive linemen. I believe that is the first holding call against an Alabama opponent all season. Do you believe <laughs> that no offensive line has held yet this year? No. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number oh 93. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Still hasn't happened, has no, it? No, it has not. Jonathan Allen flag. 
first team all SEC last year. You turn the film on and watch this guy. The motors there and the hands are just freaky scary. See him here. Yes. The hands well, just tossing an offensive lineman like that. That's Connor Shinsky. Just, yeah, just pure power. Also purely illegal. Rankin couldn't quite find the edge. Forced out of bounds by Ronnie Harrison from his safety spot. Gain of one. He's got a pretty good, a pretty talented D line with Aaron Payne on the other side. All everything out of high school. And I, we were both raving with him. He just takes you, puts those arms straight out, and that head gets on a swivel to find the football. Cole is like, you just don't see that from defensive linemen. Both he and Allen. Very talented. Pressure coming. They try to get out of screen, and that's blown up by Eddie Jackson. They invited that defensive line in to the dismay of Miley Mitchell. How is Eddie Jackson always around the football? It's because he can recognize formations from film study, and it put, he puts himself in a position to always be in a, in a spot to make plays. That's a lot of work right there to just diagnose uh, formations and then end up right where the ball's going. Four man rush on third and nine. Incomplete off the hands of Rankin. Let's go down the field and check in with Cole. Tom, I'm noticing 56 for Alabama on defense back-to-back -back plays using that inside move. Everyone talks about what an elite speed rusher Tim Williams is, and he can dip and get that edge and use that speed around, but he has been defeating this Kent State offensive line time and time again using inside moves early. Xavier Mark stands inside his 20. Derek Adams gets away a booming punt. Back all the way to the eight-yard line. He's going to try to make something happen. Marks gets swallowed up, can only make it out to the 14, a 51-yard punt, seven hard-earned yards on the return. There's some pretty talented freshmen making contributions already offensively. Jalen Hurts with the first touchdown of this game, walking in. How about Jonah Williams right here, the big right tackle. Watch him as he escorts Jonathan Jacobs right here. The nice block up front, Jacobs. Gaining most of his yards coming on the right side, especially the touchdown run. But boy, I'll tell you what, Jonah Williams, Jalen Hurts, Jen Joshua Jacobs contributing in a major way here early for the Crimson Tide. Alabama's had the ball three times. They've scored all three times behind Hurts and Jacobs. Henches to block for Hurts on the rollout. And a long run will net him two yards. I think where can Jalen Hurts get better? We know he can run the football, and then now it's just developing even more so as a pocket passer, eliminating, and rather than rolling, sit in the pocket, find the, the uh, where you're protected, slide to it, keep your eyes down the field. All those things are going to come. Even the quick passing game, slants, hitches, curls, out routes, Getting him out a little bit faster. DJ Emmons in at tailback. Here's Emmons on the touch. Got blockers in front. He's got a first down and now he has a sideline. Hard hit from Nate Holly to force him out after 17. Boy, Garrick Dieter with an open field block. And you talk, watch the patience of number 11 on the edge. It'll come right into your screen right now. He waits, makes sure, making sure the ball's caught, and then watch Dieter. Then Cam Sims. Boy, that is unselfish work on the outside by the receiving core, Cam Sims and Garrick Dieter. But knowing the timing of the play, and then he just, hey, what, he pancakes a DB in the secondary to open things up. Dieter familiar with this Kent State opponent coming out of the MAC. He transferred in from Bowling Green. Play action hurts. Pressure. In the face of pressure, lets it go incomplete. Trayvon Diggs. On the deep route. We had a fun discussion with Dieter yesterday. He said his dad is a big 
New York Yankees fan. He had a brother named Nolan after Nolan Ryan. Another one named after Thurman. Thurman Munson. Munson. Thurman is after Thurman Munson. By the way, former Kent State baseball player, the late great Thurman Munson. He was on the diamond at Kent State just a handful of years before Nick Saban played both baseball and football there. Second and ten. Toss to Bo Scarborough. Scarborough tripped up. Out there blocking for him was Calvin Ridley, and he had to hurdle him after picking up 14, and now Scarborough on the turf. Yeah, and this is unfortunate. He missed four games last year rehabbing a knee injury. We just hope he's okay. Played for Chris Wanky at IMG in 2013, but before that, the number one ranked player in the state of Alabama in Northport, Alabama. Nick Saban gave his team a couple days off this week to try and recuperate. He said after the Ole Miss win, he was the only person that didn't get an IV. Even his strength coach did. Just kind of got tripped up. Really didn't see much, maybe on the landing. Tended yeah, tackler there came in and it was he actually missed as Scarborough started to hurdle it. Oh, Scarborough. It's a big young man to get in front of and try to tackle. They've already lost Damian Harris for this game. Due to a leg injury, now Joshua Jacobs back in and a low snap. Hurts trying to make something out of it. And he'll wisely chuck this one to the sideline. And that's where he's got that that you can't really teach, the calmness under pressure with a defender barreling down on him. It's a smart thing to do, throw it away. He's a 61 complete, he has 61 completion, or his percentage is 61%, and a lot of it or plays like this where he's not going to force it just throw it out of bounds come back on second down ball barely got off the ground to the outside and Sims second effort nice. to spin it up field gain of nine Be just short of the marker. What a nice inside moving and spin back outside away from where defenders are closing inside out. That's how you run a hitch. Howard in motion. Here's Jacobs, another Alabama first down, and another big one run for Joshua Jacobs. Montez McRae in on the stop along with Jim Jones for Kent State. 16 yards on that one for Jacobs. He is a talented young player. We talk about the building blocks to a, a program. We just gave you three of them for Alabama offensively. Jonah Williams on the offensive line shows, of course, the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, and now a running back that's made his way into the conversation in Joshua Jacobs. Hurts fires in zone incomplete trying to find Cam Sims who wanted the flag coverage on the back end from Najee Murray the Ohio State transfer well, this is where I think he can just talking about it where he could get better OJ Howard sitting out in the flat after forcing one which becomes essentially double coverage watch Howard Howard's going to end up in this area as as we let this go He's going to end up right in that area. He's out wide right. Watch him just sit down. Everybody clears out, and he's out here wide open. Just sitting there waiting on the football. Eliminate and find the open receiver. Here's Jacobs. Joshua Jacobs has more yards in this game than he did in the previous three games of his Alabama career. Came in with 53 yards on the ground. You know, you don't want to become that quarterback that's it's a, a big running play, and when you're going to throw, you're known to just go down the field all the time. You open the game with a nice check down. You, know, you have to take those sometimes as, as opposed to trying to force one 
down the field for the big play. Here's a toss to B.J. Emmons. And Emmons stays with it. I've been really impressed in this first quarter, Andre, with the way these Alabama offensive players are fighting for extra yards in a game that they're heavily favored in and that they already lead by three touchdowns. Well, you've got a lot of competition going on right now for Alabama. A lot of freshmen contributing early. An early advantage for Alabama trying to score on their fourth consecutive possession when we return for the second quarter. Alabama has scored on every possession to start this game as we open the second quarter. They're looking to do the same on their fourth possession of the game. Been buoyed by big plays, eight of them of 15 yards or more. And after that big run by Kent State in the first play from scrimmage, Nick Saban's defense has shut down the Golden Flashes. And he talked about playing a complete game from start to finish. Well, that may not be good for the opponents <laughs> that they're facing, but certainly off to a good start in that area today. He said, we haven't done it yet this season. This is the 11th play of the drive. To the fade. Wow, big hit on Calvin Ridley coming from Nate Holly, and Ridley's on his back. And Nate Holly. The officials talking in the back of the end zone, but he is a hitting machine. We talked about it. He's also one of the most productive defensive players in the country, second in the country at nearly 16 tackles a game. Yeah, and last year, he had a heck of a finish to the 2015 season where he had 15 Personal plus foul. tackles. Targeting on the defense, number seven. The previous play is under further review. What do you got on that one? Well, he's not calling it on Nate Holly. Well, he's 18, so he's, it's not the back end of what happened with Calvin Ridley. Well, he can obviously correct that, and I think it should, it, if, if anybody, obviously it was Holly, but it seemed more like, almost like a flyby. Yeah, I mean, you could see him almost pulling up. I didn't think there was any chance that it's targeting, and he said number seven, so I was, I didn't think, I didn't think it was Holly. There is no seven in on the play, so watch 18. Misspeak by our official today. Remember, I don't think that's targeting at all. They don't even the helmets don't make contact. He's going through the arms and the the chest of Calvin Ridley. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised. This play being reviewed here at Bryant Denny Stadium and in addition officials back at the video center at the SEC offices in if, Birmingham taking a look and Steve Shaw the coordinator of officials right. is in the building today. If that's targeting then you need to run over there and swat the hands and not make contact because there's no other way to do it. This would be a major loss for Kent State. He doesn't launch. He just kind of just shows up and then he pulls up. You can even see him lifting his hands at the end of it. There's no no intent there. Not that there really is with for targeting but that's just not targeting. There is helmet to helmet contact. We saw that, even though it was I, I didn't, I didn't egregious. Think it, I didn't. I don't know that they made contact. He's a two-time first-team performer in the Mid-American Conference and leads the nation with nine solo tackles a game. And it was funny talking with Ben Needham, the defensive coordinator for Kent State, this week. We asked him, how has Nate Holly improved over the years? And he said, well, number one, eye discipline. He's so aggressive on the back end that he would overrun plays and come in just wanting to lay a lick on guys sometimes. But one of the most productive in the country. After review, there is no foul for targeting. Number one is not disqualified. Second down. Lee Hedrick is our referee today. Steve Landis in the replay booth and getting some help from the video center in Birmingham as well. All right, your blood pressure down, you good with that? Yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine <laughs> now. I mean, I just don't know what you do. If you're gonna call that targeting, right. you might as well put flags on and play flag football. But the idea of player safety is paramount in the game these days, and I have no problem with them throwing the flag because they have assistance to clean it up and correct it. I'd rather them throw the flag and be wrong that late, that late though 
Here's B.J. Emmons at tailback, trying to pick up a block, and Hurts swings it out to Garrick Dieter. Dieter towards the marker. No, my, my point is, you can throw a flag and rescind the penalty. That's what replay is for. So I'd rather see them throw the flag and then pick it up as opposed to let targeting go. I get it, but either you saw it or you didn't. You don't need to go consult with another official in order to figure out, did he target? Okay. You know, that's that's the, the problem or the hang-up I have with it. First and goal now for Alabama. They're perfect in the red zone this season. Derek Keefe enters at one wide receiver spot. He'll be spread out near side. Too tight, and Hurts lost his footing under center. We had this discussion with Lane Kiffin about a quarterback being under center at the goal line or inside the 10, and he brought up an interesting point because your angle has been for a long time. So many things could go wrong with a shotgun snap. He said, right. actually, a lot of things can go wrong when you're under center, too, and this time he just got stepped on. That's yeah, the right guard just taking a, a big step right or left. It's Lester Cotton that steps on the, the foot of uh, Jalen Hurts. And last week we saw him lose a ball. As he's bringing it back to throw it, it just co comes out of his hands. If you play quarterback, that's going to happen when you're under center, having your foot stepped on. Hurts trying to change direction. As well as losing one when you're getting ready to throw it. Mm -hmm. Saw that last week it from just, him as it's well. It's just one of those things that happens. But he's got he's to tell me where the research came from in terms of the fumbles under center versus the gun stuff. I got, I, I'm, I'm not thinking I'm just going to take his word for that. Nick Saban would prefer for his quarterback to be under center. Cole? Guys, I can tell you as a former center, if we were going wide zone or we were going play action or we were going straight drop back pass, my quarterback knew he better get out of there quickly because I was taking a deep step and that potential was there for him to be stepped on. Alabama going backwards here now facing a third and goal from the 11. The freshman Hurts throws on the run too strong trying to find Cam Sims. And so for the first time today, Kent State State's defense keeps out of Alabama out of the end zone. And we'll bring Adam Griffith on for a field goal attempt. Get Adam Griffith some work. This field goal, Adam Griffith would pass Trent Richardson, become eighth all time on the scoring list here at Alabama. This is a 29 yard attempt. He has it missed from inside 40 this season. And Alabama perfect in the red zone. They take three there after going backwards. 24 nothing. Alabama in front of Kent State. First day of fall here in this football Saturday. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Gatorade, the proven sports fuel. There's a young golden flash, Nick Saban, safety on the team that won the only MAC championship in school history, 1972, helped by Jack Lambert, Hall of Fame linebacker, Gary Pinkle, winning his coach in Missouri football history under Don James. Been a winner a long time. Mm -hmm. He was actually up for the Kent State head coaching job at one point. They turned him down. He told us yesterday, he said, you know, maybe I wasn't ready. They didn't think I was, but it probably would have changed my life if I would have gotten it. Who knows if he would have ended up at Alabama. Let's take a look at our player profile brought to you by Honda. Nick Saban stood 5'6", 185 as a youngster out of Fairmont, West Virginia. That MAC championship team, but he did not play in the Tangerine Bowl. He broke his ankle playing on the new turf at Northern Illinois late in that season. Teammates with Jack Lambert, grew up a big time Steelers fan. Um, host of his former teammates are at the game today and they were out at the coach's show with Eli Gold Thursday night. Yeah. And Nick Saban opened the show by telling a story. He said, you know, Monday I'm standing in front of the mirror shaving and Miss Terry sidles in and Gets right up next to me as Kent State runs a reverse here with KV on Price. A lot of running, and he lost the football. Picked up by Alabama. That was going nowhere. Then he coughed it up, and he puts it right in the tide's hands. Sometimes you just have to know when a play's over, get as much as you can, try to get back to the line of scrimmage, and then get on the ground. 
Right here. That's the play is over. He's going nowhere. Protect the football. Ronnie Harrison comes up with it. So probably conflicted emotions for Nick Saban's former teammates watching this one and Alabama domination early on. Miss Terry, his lovely wife, said, I know you've got former teammates coming in town to this weekend. You better not have any former girlfriends coming to town. We got change of quarterback. Great story. Blake Barnett now in the game for Alabama. Joshua Jacobs, a tailback next to him. Barnett started the first game of the season against Southern California. This is his first snap of the day, and he's pressured. And Barnett will get thrown for a loss, trying to get out of the uh, pocket, but couldn't do so. Anthony Johnson with the tackle loss of three. 6-5 out of Corona, California. Santiago High School came off the bench against Western Kentucky to throw for 64 yards. Was 5 of 6 in the air in his start against USC, but it was a stagnant offensive performance at that point in the game. He went to Hertz and he's been the man under center first ever since. And now he goes deep down the sideline into coverage. Dieter off of his hands. Jarrell Foster deep for Kent State. Foster should have come up with an interception there. It was thrown right to him. See here, forcing it into coverage. Bad angle by Foster, or actually jumps a little bit too early. Foster Jr. out of Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati. Great program there. Third down and 13 for Blake Barnett. Kent State brings pressure from the edge. Barnett already sacked once, gets tripped up, and he's sacked for the second time. And after scoring on its first three drives, Alabama going backwards on the previous two. Anthony Johnson brought the pressure that time. I guess this quarterback competition has just kind of continued. As you jump up 24 0, that's when I think you have an opportunity to continue with Hurts, give him some more, or continue to develop him as a passer, coach him up. Everything doesn't have to be a, a big play. And I agree with you that reps are valuable for a guy like Jalen Hurts. But if you're Nick Saban and you've seen guys go down last week, you've seen injuries today, yeah. you already have a three plus touchdown lead. As Johnson leaves after his second sack of this possession, you, you might want to put Jalen Hurts in bubble wrap. Yeah, my, my theory, generally, I don't know that it it, uh, it it falls true in this game, but generally, you don't you haven't scored enough points for me in the first half of a game. You haven't gotten enough work in the first half of a football game. That's what the second half is for. 49 yard attempt for Adam Griffith. First 20 plays of the game for Alabama. They had 209 yards. The next 20 they've netted just 69 yards. Griffith's got the leg and he's got nice. the accuracy. Second field goal today for Adam Griffith. 28 and 48 yards out. 27 up. Now let's take a look at playing with style. Brought to you by Belk. An early touchdown run by Jalen Hurts. Nice blocking up front. O.J. Howard in here. Scarborough. Me, Jacobs getting in the action. And then the big the true freshman right tackle, Jonah Williams, throwing a nice block to free him up for his second touchdown run. But Joshua Jacobs off to a good start. Williams and then certainly Jalen Hurts, but there's Jacobs, his afternoon. First three games, only seven carries today. Six for 75 yards and has found the end zone on two occasions. All Alabama this morning. Ernest Calhoun back to receive this one. From the one. Calhoun out past the 20, 27 nothing here. Let's head to the studio and check in for the first time today with Peter Burns. Monster start already up 17 nothing. Then it's Chad Kelly to Demarcus Lodge, 55 yards. Ole Miss up 24 to zip over Georgia. Wow. Does that surprise you, Dre? No. No, Ole Miss is a good football team, and they faced two tough opponents early in the season in Florida State, and then last week against Alabama, and they're going to just take it out on Georgia, who I think 
Mm -hmm. you know, the, the surprise is just Georgia's play. They've been able to squeak out wins, but just not look very impressive. Malik Mitchell lets it go complete, and Will Matthews got welcomed by Ronnie Harrison. Let's check in with Cole quickly. Alabama running back Damian Harris reportedly out for this game. Saw him taken to the locker room, ankle taped with ice. He will not return. All right, thank you, Cole. And now Ronnie Harrison a little banged up after that big hit. The sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida, favoring his left arm, maybe his left shoulder. Second down and three. Ruben Foster is the quarterback of that Alabama defense. Low snap. Pressured by Mika Fitzpatrick and Malik Mitchell thrown for a loss. They'll give him forward progress at the 21. It's a loss of eight. They bring Mika Fitzpatrick and he's able to get there with a snap as it throws the timing of the playoff. See it here. A little low. That's the second one. Hard to handle. Got a free rusher coming off the edge. You can't gather it fast enough and get it out. Third down and 11. Fitzpatrick with his first sack of the season. Nick Saban admitted, say, listen, Minka did not have a great game against Ole Miss, but let's judge this kid based on what he did all of last year, starting every game en route to a national championship. Pressured again. And another sack. It was started by Reuben Foster, cleaned up by Ryan Anderson. Well, the two linebackers teaming up. Foster applied the initial pressure. And once Mitchell is able to spin out of the trouble, here comes Ryan Anderson. They're just too fast defensively. When you make a mistake or one slows you down, there will be there, there's always someone there to clean you up. Nice pass rush off the edge by Reuben Foster. He is relentless. Derek Adams punting from the end zone. Almost got it. And Marks lets it take a big hop. And it will trickle back into Alabama territory inside the 40. Cole, we're noticing there on that last possession by Kent State that Stefano Millen has a very interesting delivery with that shotgun snap. Absolutely. And you, you have to think about the fact that, to me, snapping the football, just like throwing the football. So it's going to roll off your fingers just like that. It's a humid day. It's a hot day. And the fact that some of that sweat can be dripping off your helmet, getting onto the football, very difficult to keep your hand dry on days like today. One reason that ball could be slipping out a little bit early and coming back low to the quarterback. All right, thank you, Cole. We've seen low snaps from both sides, but not to look at how he's holding the yeah, cone he, he of the ball. He doesn't snap it the way Cole would snap it, where it spins back. He takes the nose of the ball and just kind of flicks it back there, where it almost knuckleballs back to the quarterback. Blake Barnett operating on the shotgun behind Bradley Bozeman. And catch made, great hands by Calvin Ridley. So that's by design then that yeah. he's flipping it back there instead of like Cole was talking about. When I when spiraling. I was when I was in high school playing quarterback, we were under center. Our center used to snap it that way when I was under. So there's plenty of different ways to get it get the job done. Get Cole's take on it in just a moment. Joshua Jacobs in at running back. Trying to stretch this one out. Cole, if I were the quarterback, I'm just speaking from Andre's perspective, and Reuben Foster's on the other side, I want that ball as quickly as possible. Don't throw me a changeup back there. What do you see? I think that's one of the reasons that teams go to snapping the football by grabbing the nose the way that you're describing it, is you get that knuckleball action, and by default, it takes a little velocity off of the football. When you snap the way I was showing, that's when you get the spiral, that's when the ball comes back a little more quickly, but also, if that thing's off left, right, high, low, it's going left, right, high, low in a hurry as well. Mm -hmm. Good point. Barnett gets turned around again and finally dumps it off and finds Joshua Jacobs. Something out of nothing there. Nate Holly, the stop, gain of 15. Well, that's the presence in mind and know where your safety valve is. As soon as Blake Barnett spun around. He was looking for the safety valve. Where is Joshua Jacobs located? Saw him, eyes down the field. Nice catchable ball. And then it's off to the races in the open field. Boy, is he good with the ball in his hands after the catch or after the handoff. They have something with Jacobs. 
Sims in motion showing the jet sweep. B.J. Emmons on the right side. Holly and Cuthbert in on the tackle for Kent State. Nick Cuthbert another stop today. He's a Georgia Tech transfer. He's there in 2012 as a walk-on. Academic All-American and he's on the Werfel Trophy list. He's a nominee for the Campbell Award, the AFCA Good Works team, and the Burlesworth Trophy. Six tackles today for Cuthbert to go along with a 4.0 GPA. Andre, as an undergraduate, he only got one B. I thought you were going to ask me, uh, did I have a 4.0? Mm. The answer to that was uh, no. I got one B. Over the middle, complete. Here's Howard. Touchdown, Alabama, 34 yards. Same exact play that was tipped earlier in the game. It was going left to right earlier. They flipped the formation. Does Lane Kiffin? He brings Howard from left to right this time. You see the middle of the field open. It was a line shot. This one's got a little air under it. Tell you what, nice job of throwing, leading the tight end out in front where he just catches and runs. Five plays and 61 yards. Griffith adds the point after. He was the offensive MVP of the national championship game. O.J. Howard ran right past the Clemson defense. So Kent State, you have good company. How many people can keep up with that guy? This college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com today. And coming up at halftime today from Bryant-Denny Stadium, you can watch a live performance of the Million Dollar Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app and Watch ESPN. Calhoun will watch that one go out of bounds at the one and so a flag on the play and that will give Kent State good field position on the kickoff out of bounds. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown by O.J. Howard. You got man to man here and watch the watch the route inside nice move and then a crosser. On the kicking team. The ball be placed watch the where 30. the ball's placed pretty tight touchdown. coverage but the throw actually creates more separation and then just speed by O.J. Howard at 6'6", 251. Amazing the speed a player with his size has. Just pulling away. Kim well, that's Bar pretty. Can Barnett get him the ball earlier in that situation, or does he have to look off the safety before he goes to it? Well, he has to make sure it's clear. So you want to hold a safety that's there to the backside and then allow for an even larger throwing lane. Then it's just a matter of putting it in a window. And he, uh, the timing was perfect. And the ball placement even better. Miles Washington in a tailback for Kent State now. Washington takes it left side. And only picks up one. It's a Kent State team that was dead last in the country in scoring last season. They're trying to find some offense under Don Treadwell, former head coach at Miami and former offensive coordinator for Mark D'Antonio at Michigan State under head coach Paul Haynes, who's a Kent State product. He played there back in the late 80s, early 90s. Glenn Mason was his head coach early in his career. Haynes was a walk-on in the Kent State program. I asked him about coming back to coach at his alma mater. He said, listen, I have pride and passion where I came from and who I am but kind of like Nick Saban he said initially I didn't I didn't want to get into coaching I wanted to be an FBI agent got a taste of it after going back to his high school and helping out as Raquan James takes it for five he recruits the state of Louisiana now but the reason being is not a lot of Mac schools get down and, and recruit in the state of Louisiana has some relationships there and starting to see more and more players that, on this Kent State roster from the state of Louisiana and there's a lot there uh, he made a great point. He said, listen, it's one thing to recruit an area and to get a guy from an area, but they got to be able to play. Yeah. They've got to be able to contribute. Kent State 0 for 4 on third down today. This program has not been successful. You go back to 2012, they played in the MAC title game. They win that game. They would have played in a BCS Bowl. They lose to Northern Illinois instead, and since then, the program has really faltered.
is 10 and 28 for a program going into that game, which had won 15 of 17 going in to the title game. That was a nice break on the ball by Ronnie Harrison. So Kent State remains winless on third downs. Some really good talent on that team that played the MAC title game. Brian Winters, left tackle now with the Jets. Josh Klein was on the left side of the line now with the Titans. Mm -hmm. Dre Archer was a tremendous oh, talent yeah. out of the backfield. Speed to burn. Yes. But it's a work in progress for this Kent State program now and going forward. Trailing Alabama 34 0, a low punt. We'll take a Kent State hop, and they'll let that one trickle inside the five, and it's down inside that five yard line at the two. So Alabama will be backed up after a 56 yard punt. Tom Hart, Heisman winner, Andre Ware, all Alabama early today. What's impressed you most? Well, I, I think just taking care of the football and then, you know, turning it over to the offensive line. When you really don't know yet where your passing game or where things are going to come from in the passing game, the, you go right directly to the offensive line. And J Jacobs has really stepped up and provided some punch behind an offensive line that can certainly move some bodies. It's an offensive line that hasn't been playing perfect this yeah. year. In fact, as a team, Nick Saban told us, he said, listen, we haven't had a complete game. This obviously their most complete game thus far. And I'm interested to see if they can continue. Yeah, to this point in the season, then you start looking at the talent and it's such a young football team, a lot of young talent everywhere. And by Jonah Williams We're talking about offensive line the true freshman right tackle has had one heck of a ball game so far freshman from Folsom California they run that right side and turn it up the sideline with a nice run is Joshua Jacobs I mean, I mean right there to right on on point is, is Jacobs excuse me Williams with a block Jacobs gets outside because of the block of Jonah Williams watch the big fella right here he'll just kind of secure the edge with his block that opens it up for Jacobs look at all that I mean now it's the one matchup you want the one on one matchup just seal the end down he crashes everything and now you're one on one in the open field with the safety Nate Holly the youngster from Folsom California stands 6'5", 296 you can hear the train of coming when he gets going here's Ridley off of his hands well that's just a young quarterback you know everything sometimes has got to be thrown and drilled in there in a tight spiral. You just want to get it in Ridley's hands out in front where he can catch and run. But to, in fairness, that is a harder pass to complete than the one he hit O.J. Howard with down the field because it's so wide open that you tend to just tighten a little bit on it. You quarterbacks always say that, and I'm not buying it. I'm You're just trying to bail each other I'm, out. I'm He's not the only. I'm not the one that. Is, I'm not the only one telling you that. I'm not buying it. It's a difficult throw when <laughs> they're like wide open, man. The widest fairway is the hardest and, one and to hit. And you can't hit it sometimes. Well, I can't hit any fairways. <laughs> Here we go. Just turn and give it to him. That's a tough throw. Going left. Still should have been caught, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, maybe I bailed him out a little bit on that one. <laughs> it's a tight fraternity. Third down at 10. Barnett. Oh, tried to thread it in there. And Daryl Marshall was all over Trayvon Diggs. A big move for Trayvon Diggs, who's been practicing both offense and defense until yeah. Tuesday this week to come over and try to acclimate himself to the offense. And we'll tell you later in this game how the signalers are helping Trayvon Diggs pick up the offense quicker on game day. I think he's going to be a sensational wide receiver. Lane, Lane Kiffin really went to battle to get him over from the defensive side of the football. Some reps and threw a nice block in space earlier in this ball game. J.K. Scott to punt it away for the first time. Had a shank against Ole Miss. But otherwise dependable, and that one good for 46 yards on Mullins' first punt. What are you doing post game? Let's go get a milkshake. Maybe we can get one at the half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, we've, we're going to the bullpen for the second half in this one, just to rest up for next week. I get cramps up here. It is a warm one. It's supposed to be it's fall. Doesn't feel like it, does it? No, not at all. 
is middle of the summer weather. I want Brother Barnhart to tell us what's going on with Georgia today. We're going to hold off on that statue of their freshman quarterback. It's a 31 0 Ole Miss lead over Georgia. Malik Mitchell flicks it out of bounds. He has been under constant pressure and such quickness up front for Alabama. He talked about Jonathan Allen and De'Ron Payne. Guys like Tim Williams, who's already a sack by Ryan Anderson. Yeah, but one thing, though, about playing in this building today and in front of this crowd, it, it shouldn't be an issue for Kent State and Miley Mitchell. They opened the season on the road at right. Happy Valley in front of 99,000 at Penn State, and they're in that game in the second half. Yeah, but Penn State doesn't have athletes like that. No, I was talking about simply the building. Here's Miles Washington, and he gets tripped up after a gain of four, and that will leave third down. Looks like Alabama's going to have a great opportunity to get the offense back on the field before the half ends. Coach will tell, my co high school coach will tell, that was 99,000 up there. They have nothing to do with what's going on down here. They're just here to root and cheer, and, and as the atmosphere may have a little to once you walk in the stadium, but when the ball is snapped, they have nothing to do with it. Kent State had 219 rush yards gained in their game against Penn State. Thus far today, 46 yards on 13 rushes. They have yet to convert a third down. They had a receiver open at the top here. Mitchell pressured. He's sacked again. Mika Fitzpatrick had some help from Tim Williams. It's unfair to bring an extra man. Alabama gets enough pressure with only four rushers. That time they brought a fifth. And Miley Mitchell's holding his right arm as he heads off the field. The left-handed quarterback got driven into the turf. On a host of you. Fitzpatrick gets there first. Alabama. And there's Tim the Williams along with Alabama. Jonathan Allen to make sure that he doesn't get away. But Will be a 30 sometimes out. blitzes are run for timing purposes. Tim Williams last year got quarterback pressures every 2.8 snaps, the most efficient pass rusher in the country. Cole, there's some monsters up front for Bama. You know what I was thinking before that play was snap time, and I don't know if you guys noticed it, but Tim Williams came jogging out on third down. If I'm a Kent State offensive lineman, how are you feeling when you roll out of that huddle and you see 56 lined up outside you and you're the left tackle and hasn't been playing this series? So not only is it a Tim Williams, it's a fresh Tim Williams that you have to go try and protect your quarterback in front of. It's one of the things that Jeremy Pruitt talked to us about yesterday, keeping guys fresh. And so the question, especially after so many starters were out at the end of the Ole Miss game, was how do we keep them fresh? Would we rather have our starters in the game in the fourth quarter and therefore take snaps away from them in the second or the other way around? They're learning that they want to take some snaps away from them early in a fresh Tim Williams. Yeah, just may have driven Mitchell out of the game. Remove Minka Fitzpatrick in the blitz and, and <laughs> Tim Williams is there to make a sack. I mean, he's getting ready to hit the quarterback as well about the same time that uh, Fitzpatrick hit him. Xavier Marks from the 25. Nice vision. Marks to the 40. Looking for a block. He's got it. He's got help. Xavier Marks got to beat the punter. He beat the punter. Touchdown, Alabama. 75-yard return. I watched this kid, Xavier Marks, play in high school. It's a high school very much near where I live, George Ranch High School. They won a state championship last year, but he is every bit as good as advertised. Undersized at 5'8", 166, but he knows exactly what to do with the football in his hands. Second straight game with a punt return for a touchdown for Nick Saban's special teams. And since the start of last season, that is now 16 non-offensive touchdowns for Alabama. To put that in perspective, Kent State has 22 total touchdowns in that span. Andy Papanastis on to attempt the extra point of the Ole Miss transfer. They've even gone to their backup kicker here in the first half. So Xavier Marks. Last week, it was Eddie Jackson. Watch the block set up and just the ability to stop and start, cut, jump start, or jump stop, and then it's a, a foot race. And you know, it's over once 
The punter misses. Just speed. You know, for a tackler, Derek Adams is a great punter. A little ole. He didn't even touch him. Oh, just a little cut right there at the end. And I don't know that he got a hand on it. And a mosh pit in the back of the end zone. Congratulating Marks, who got the opportunity today because Eddie Jackson has been banged up in practice. We didn't know if Eddie Jackson was even going to be out there in his safety spot. So they took him off punt return and gave Marks the opportunity. Kent State will get the ball back. Not sure if they want it. Second quarter, four possessions. They've run ten plays, and they've lost nine yards. And it was an axe last week. Now it's a sledgehammer. At least the edges aren't as sharp. This talent all the way through this Alabama football team. Papanastas to kick it off. Ernest Calhoun scoops it at the 10. Dynamic young, uh, dynamic veteran player for this Kent State program gets it out to the 25 yard line. You know, we were talking last night, production meeting while we're having dinner, and you just think, think, to, think about this for a second with Alabama. Most teams are running either walk ons when you're in practice and you're working against the first team and you want to work. You know, offense against defense. You're working against walk-ons and, and backup players. When you're at Alabama, the offense is getting a look from four and five stars. So essentially, you're getting a de facto game each and every day Those in practice. Valuable reps. George and, Bolas now in a quarterback. And hungry players. Well, it's something we're talking with the director of athletics here, Bill Battle, before the game today. There's just so much to be earned if you're on the Alabama team because you think about it two ways Andre that the guys who are program players if you want to think of it that like walk ons they want to be a part of this program for their entire life and, yep. and they earn that right by wearing this uniform and the other guys who have bright futures on the field they need to work every day to get better at the craft to get to the next level yep. and they have the talent to do so but it's just competition on a daily basis that a lot of places can't replicate. You can't get the same look. So when you get ready to go play uh, Ole Miss or whomever else it is that you're going to play Auburn down the road, I mean, you have players that will give you a solid look and challenge each and every day. Sometimes by the time you get to game day, it's easier. The game's easier than practice. And it's one of the reasons that Nick Saban put his trust in Jalen Hurts as a freshman quarterback because he saw after Hurts worked against this incredible defense, he saw what the defense saw and that, that defense respected what this kid was doing against them in practice. Yeah, and you're lighting them up every day in practice and you have defensive players speaking on your behalf. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no doubt that, that that is heard by the head coach. First quarter is all about Alabama's running game and their defense second quarter special teams and defense. On third and four, Miles Washington trying to lay the wood on Reuben Foster. You're not going to win that battle very often. We're talking to Jeremy Prude about Reuben Foster. He said, you know, I was here when we recruited Foster when we first found him before he went off. He goes, I first knew he was a great player because Kirby Smart had the office next to me, <laughs> and he screamed through the wall. Pruitt, get over here. you got to watch tape on this kid. Foster was just a ninth grader at the time, lighting guys up. He said, Kirby and I saw it when he was in ninth grade that he had that it that you just don't see in everybody. Yeah, just a very talented player. He actually saw action early in his career as a true freshman here at Alabama. Instinctive, big-time hitter. You get the feeling that Kirby Smart and Jeremy Pruitt don't need an intercom system? No, not at all. They can talk through the walls. Marks took the last one for 75 yards in a score. He'll let this one pass by, and Holly will down it inside the two. Well, that's one he's got to field. Whether fair catch, whatever, you've got to get over and get to that football, and that's exactly what Coach Saban's going to tell him right now. 
It turns into a 67 yard punt. Ha! I no, lost, it in, I lost sun. it in the sun. And Nick Saban's not buying it. <laughs> nope, not selling me on that one. <laughs> oh, and he starts blocking the sun himself. You know exactly what he's thinking. Yeah, right. <laughs> you see it. See the field position that's given up. You're over there. You got to somehow get your hands on that ball. Would you dare drop an excuse on Nick Saban like no. I lost it in the sun? You can try, but it's not going to work. But you think, well, it's a 41-point game. Why is he on him for that? Well, he's on him for down the road, and if that happens, you get it corrected right now so it doesn't happen when you're in a big-time close game and you're giving up field position where that part of the game is what may end up costing you the game. Jalen Hurts took that last snap after Blake Barnett had been in at quarterback. And the first half will come to an end with Alabama in control against Kent State. 41-0. We'll hear from Cole Kubelik with Coach Saban coming up on the Cooper Tire Halftime Report. But first, let's take you to Tony Barnhart and Peter Burns back in the studio with the Cooper Tire Halftime Report. All right, welcome into the Cooper Tire Halftime Report. Peter Burns, Tony Barnhart, Coach Saban, 199 wins. I think it's safe to say he's probably going to grab number 200 today, Tony. Probably something, but you know what most guys good. do for their alma mater? Yep. Most guys, like you or me, will write them a little check. What does yep. Nick Saban do for his alma mater? He brings them in, gives them a game, $1.5 million. Thank you very much, Coach. Well, I don't know if he's saying thank you very much. Uh, just dominant first half, 18 first downs for Alabama, only two for Ken State. Cole Kubley caught up with Coach Nick Saban at half. Coach Saban, defense pitching a shutout in the first half. How would you describe their performance? Well, other than the first play where we didn't get a, a call up front to cancel the gaps like we needed to, I think we played pretty well. I've been really pleased with the way the offense has moved the ball and scored a lot of points. So, um, you know, we said we wanted to play a complete game, and I think that was a pretty complete half. We've seen both quarterbacks in the first half. How will you handle that situation in the second half? Well, you know, we, we had a plan in this game that we were going to play Blake some sometime in the first half. So uh, Jalen did a nice job. It had nothing to do with how he was playing, but uh, we just wanted to get him some experience as well. And I think it was valuable and we'll probably do some of the same things in the second half. Thank you, coach. All right. Thank you. You're watching SEC Network football presented by Allstate. We get ready to start the second half. All Alabama. 41 nothing leading Kent State. Welcome back. Tom Hart alongside Heisman winner Andre Ware. All right, so Alabama played its most consistent and productive half of the season the first half. Nick Saban told Cole Kublik that. What is he looking for in the second half? Just more of, of the same. He talked about playing a complete half game. Well, he told Cole as well he played a complete half. So he's looking, even though there will be a lot of backup players in this game, he wants to see a full game played here. Jalen Hurts got things rolling early, right out of the gate, a touchdown run. A nice block, nice blocking up front. O.J. Howard, Jonah Williams, the true freshman right tackle. Jacobs, the true freshman running back. And all of a sudden, Blake Barnett comes in. More production. Nice throw to O.J. Howard to get himself a touchdown pass. Four drives for Hertz, 24 points, three for Barnett. The first one went backwards, but then ended up with a touchdown pass and has looked good as well. 18 first downs for Alabama to just two for Kent State. 50 plays of offense for Alabama in the first half. 352 yards of offense. And it's a hot one here today, folks. 94 degrees now. It'll get up to 96, and if that happens, it will tie the hottest home game in Alabama history on record. That occurred back in 97 when they hosted Arkansas. So that may also play into it, especially the way their game against Ole Miss that finished last you. week. Seems like there should have been a game closer to triple digits at some point. Well, you know, I, I guess you could think about it this way. Alabama doesn't play a heck of a lot of games that kick at 11 a.m. Yeah. where the heat can build if you're kicking at 2.30 local or 6 or 7. Maybe it's dissipated by then. J.K. Scott to get us started. Calhoun back for Kent State. Two years ago, team high 1,033 all-purpose yards for Calhoun. 
And this one's kicked all the way out of the back of the end zone. 41 nothing here. Let's take it back to the studio. All right, Tom, we're wondering how Ole Miss is going to come out in that second half against Georgia. Well, how about Jason Pellerin finds Eugene Brasley for a touchdown? 38 nothing Rebels now. Wow. And uh, doesn't, get much, ugly. doesn't get much easier for Georgia. They'll have Tennessee coming in next week, and that's either a Tennessee team that is coming off of a win against Florida or is going to be hungry after losing their 12th in a row to Florida. It just about doubled up in total yards. Ole Miss to, to Georgia. What your what were your expectations for Kirby Smart in his first season? I mean, you don't expect to score like this, but if you were to tell me they go on the road and lose at Ole eight, Miss, eight nine wins, and they were still unsettled at quarterback, mm -hmm. and so I thought that would play a part in it. But uh, it may it may squeak out a ninth win. I, but I thought about eight and four, somewhere around there, nine and three, his first year. And a bowl trip. George Bullis is starting the second half at quarterback for Kent State. We haven't seen Malik Mitchell since he was injured on that sack late in the second quarter. Bullis took over for, for him. Yeah, They're also without Justin Agner, a true freshman from just outside of Atlanta who started their opener against Penn State. And he hasn't seen action since that Penn State game out with an injury today. Bullis more of a runner than he is a thrower. Well, handed off on this play. And Big time takedown, two point takedown for Jonathan Allen. Cole, you know what I love about this young man? I first noticed him two years ago in the Tennessee game. I'm studying film and I see a screen 35, 40 yards down the field. And I had to run it back because I'm thinking, wait a minute, 93 is making a tackle on a screen. Turns out it was Jonathan Allen from the defensive tackle position. But on that play, lined up out wide at defensive end. Consecutive plays against Western Kentucky earlier this season. He's in the A gap between the center and guard. Next play, he's in the B gap between the guard and tackle. Play after, he's lined up over a flex tight end outside the offensive tackle. Versatility is going to make this young man a lot of money. He can get after the quarterback, that's for sure. To throw it on third is Bullis. He's able to find Raquan James. This number on Jonathan Allen really impressed me. Think about all the great pass rushers they've had here. He's sixth in school history coming into today with 21 sacks. Kendall Moorhead's up next with 25. I don't think anybody's catching the great Derek Thomas. Derek Thomas had 52 sacks. No. What I like about him is he plays with good leverage, good leverage on the outside or out on the edge. It's hard to get outside of him when he's at at the, at the end spot. Just a very instinctive player, as Cole mentioned, extremely versatile. A blocked field goal against Western Kentucky yeah. had that 75-yard return against Ole Miss. Initially it ruled an interception, but ruled a fumble after they went back to the film. Cost him some interception return yards. Xavier Marks taken down on the punt return. 40 yard punt and seven yard return. And so we start the second half with Alabama getting its first touch. And this is an Alabama offense which runs as fast as it ever has under Nick Saban, obviously under the direction of Lane Kiffin. He said, when we came in, the idea was let's go fast to help our offense, but also help our defense get some looks at these fastball offenses throughout college football and specifically the SEC. And one way they do it is by signaling in the plays, not to the team as a whole, but to different units. So the offensive line will look to one signaler. The skill position guys will look to one signaler. And you see Trayvon Diggs near side of your screen, the wide receiver split out left. Since he's brand new to the offense, yeah. they've gone so far as to dedicate a specific signaler directly to Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, so you, he's the only guy sending him the play call. There are the signalers, and you see him looking over to get the play call. And I think that last shot was a great example. When we see those signalers, and uh, usually Andre, most teams, wh whether you're sending in a real one or a dummy, Trayvon Diggs doesn't need a signal to get upfield. Whether you're signaling in real plays or dummies, it's backup quarterbacks. It's graduate assistants. It's guys like that. We saw an offensive lineman with a headset down there, number 64, on the sideline for Alabama. So that's a key that he's looking for the offensive line plays or is a dummy to do that same thing. I can tell you as a former offensive lineman, you like nothing better than to have your own set of signals because you get that. Then you get to the line of scrimmage and you make your calls based on what the defense is giving you, Tom. You don't have to wait 
for what the running backs are going to do for each in particular wide receiver position that's getting their assignments. You get yours, you get to the line of scrimmage, and you set. It's the first time I've ever heard it, and I think it's an absolutely brilliant move. Yeah. I would expect more teams to be going to it soon. A lot of teams are doing it, and I actually had to commend Lane Kiffin yesterday in our meetings with, for, for being able to change. A lot of guys that come from systems like the West Coast, they get stuck in it. You know, they, they it, it, it almost is a, it does something for their ego to be able to spit out sentences that are, you know, three paragraphs long just to call the simple play. Here's Diggs on the jet sweep, and he's able to pick up the first down. And so when you look at it, and his ability to be able to adapt to what's going on in college football uh, and then just instead of spider two y banana and all the formations green right slot spider two y banana all that stuff or strong or however you want to call it he just calls a k9 and now everybody can just go play football everybody knows what k9 means rather than just this all this lingo your verbiage you're taking the syllables down to two that's it letters I just use that because that's a West Coast play but you know you simplify things you take the thought out of it for players they go play faster and harder and what does that one mean who knows you're in trouble come on to the <laughs> bench <laughs> do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars B.J. Emmons in a tailback. They certainly don't have a monopoly on this whole idea, but Lane Kiffin told us yesterday, said, here I am trying to coach against Oregon out in that USC, and they put 750 yards of offense on us. I turned to Steve Sarkeesian yeah. and go, what, what are we doing here? How do we simplify this? Why are we staying all night dreaming up these complex schemes when Oregon only runs four plays and they just ran it all over us? Or the ability to adapt and change. And how about Nick Saban as well? Coach Saban adapting and changing and implementing some RPOs into the into his offense. Everybody else is doing it. You know what? If it's within the rules, I'm gonna do it as well. And so his ability to adapt and change, because you know what happens when you don't? You end up fired and you end up, you know, doing something else rather than walking the sideline. With all that young experience or lack of experience in the youth on this offense, too, think about one particular offensive lineman like a Jonah Williams who doesn't have to get the calls from the center. He can just look to the sideline and get the offensive line play as well. He's ready to go. It's one way to make young people much more comfortable in their offense. Jalen Hurts, first possession, second half for Alabama, pressured, and he will chuck that. Love listen, it. listen, Love it's it. not, they didn't reinvent the wheel here. Nobody's reinventing anything in football. You are borrowing from somebody else who thought of a more efficient system. Sarkeesian, now an offensive analyst, is allowed to listen in on the headset on game day, but the boom mic is taped up because he's not allowed to communicate. He's not an assistant. And with coach. better athletes. Yes. I'm not, I'm, you know, you're, ta you're, you're taking ideas and transforming not only yourself, but the entire program. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you got some of the better athletes in the country on this football team in which to do it with. It's just a matter of time before they start to really explode offensively. Emmons tripped up at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for two. It was part of our conversation, lengthy conversation with Nick Saban yesterday, and he said, listen, this what you know, basically this wasn't stuff that Nick Saban believed in or that he obviously they didn't practice here at Alabama until he realized what an advantage was for teams within this league in college yeah. football. He said if you don't take advantage of the rules, it's like playing hockey without a stick. Yep. If you're not going to run the run pass option, which is so prevalent in college football this day and stresses a defense at every level, well, then you're not taking advantage of one of the great new concepts in college football or football as a whole. Hertz finds Derek Keefe, first reception of the season for Keefe. He still hates shotgun snaps <laughs> down inside the red zone or when you're inside the five. Nice job here, squaring the shoulders. Just throw it out there and let him catch it. How about the footwork there? Nice job by the redshirt sophomore. Lane also pointed out, was quick to point out, he said, you know, if you do it right and you run all this stuff quicker, then practice ends quicker. Well, practice ends quicker at other places. Here, we're still out there putting our work in. But it could be a quicker practice and less time on the field. Hurts throwing on the run again, and he goes back to back to Keith. 
Third year sophomore out of Cincinnati's LaSalle High School. Well, they stack it left. This is a great play call by Lane Kiffin to get them and get Kent State in the defensive look they wanted. Motion across, and now you have the numbers. So it's an easy short roll and a nice toss by Jalen Hurts for a completion. Lane Kiffin will be on a lot of schools' short lists looking for new head coaches going into next season. A bunch here, a little flat flag drag concept right out here. Hurts trying to pump and go into the end zone. Nothing there. We'll take off. Hurts cuts back, bends it to the goal line, and gets tripped up by Kevin Byrne after a gain of nine. And that's what I mean. You've got the numbers. That's where he can get better. Pre snap reads. Where am I going in the passing game? When the pre snap read tells me I have the advantage. You've got that concept of a bunch formation, flat flag drag, flat curl drag, whatever it is, that's where you take your eyes first, not to the side where the defense actually has you outnumbered. Second and goal from the one. There we go, under center. B.J. Emmons is the tailback. Oh, play action. Hurts fires. Caught after a bobble and a touchdown from one yard out on a pass from Jalen Hurts to Mac Wilson. They're finding offensive players all over the place. A nice job of the play fake, selling it. Nice calm movement to where it holds the defense. They don't know who has the ball. Would have been thrown a little bit more in front, but they also have a player there and Nick Cuthbert. The linebacker to that side, you have to negotiate. You can't throw it out in front, otherwise he gets a hand on it. 13 play, 66 yard drive. Papa Nastas on to attempt his second extra point of the game. They're even creating depth at the kicker position. Well, that's a score folks out west may be interested in. Alabama leads Kent State by 48 with 6.14 to go in the third quarter. Let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. A nice job here, but Jalen Hurts selling it, but Mark Wilson. Nice grab. Mac Wilson's a linebacker. Bring him in and in short double, yardage situation. Double over as a, a fullback. I mean, if Trayvon Diggs is going both ways, Mac Wilson's going to say, hey, maybe we need to get me the ball more. Yep. Calhoun will bring it out from a yard deep. Track down in the open field out to the 13 yard line. College football continues today following us 4 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network. Delaware State's in Como to take on Mizzou. Then at 7.30 tonight, South Carolina faces Kentucky in primetime. SEC college football all day today on SEC Network. Brandon McElwain, short in stature, large on production, responsible for four touchdowns already, the freshman quarterback, and Boom Williams up to a nice start. Alabama already rolling some subs in on the defensive side of the ball, including Keith Holcomb. Two sports standout, also plays baseball here at Alabama, in on the tackle. Gain of four. Holcomb's got that eye black going on the football field, kind of like he does over on the diamond. Or is it all the way down his face when he's playing baseball? <laughs> Any advantage in the intimidation department? <laughs> Hootie Jones is in the game at a safety spot. Jared Maiden, I believe, was on the field the previous snap, and they're going to run it right up the middle with their quarterback, Bullis. This will be the second largest gain of the day for Kent State as Bullis is able to pick up Kent State's first first down. Since there was three and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter, it's only their third 
first down today. And this is kind of what he's known for. More of a runner than he is a passer. His job there is seeing the hole with, with Bolas and able to pick up the first down. But the speed sweep, this guy gets you going one way, and if you can get an angle once a defender missteps that you're blocking, now you got now you got running lanes. Most of those 68 yards coming on two plays, incomplete there. Trying to get it to Raekwon James. We've got Dakota Ball in the game, who's an interesting story. He started his career as a defensive lineman. They were shorthanded at tight end. He moved to that side of the ball, and then this year came back over to the defensive side of the ball. He just looks like a defensive player to me. Oh, he does. No doubt about it. Got that Schmedium jersey going. <laughs> so you can show the guns. On second and ten. Rankin. How about Dakota getting in there on a stop? Sticking his nose in. And they're along with Keith Holcomb. By the way, Alabama's got a new baseball coach this year. Greg Goff came over from Louisiana Tech. Had a nice visit with Coach Goff and his staff over at the Diamond yesterday afternoon. So Keith Holcomb will be suiting up for a new coach this year. They're on the field doing their fall ball work. And in the spring, it's tough on Keith because he's bouncing back and forth between football and baseball. Third down, eight. <laughs> On the end around, Cavius Price, the Boy. freshman from Bradenton, Florida, that Holcomb gets there. greeted by Mr. Holcomb. Well, he, he's a versatile player. He moved inside this year from Will Linebacker, where he played last year outside. And I was always around Reggie Raglan asking questions. That that right there, that exchange, that was like a, a baseball high five exchange. That's <laughs> something that you spend all day in the in the clubhouse or in yep. batting practice working on the whole high five situation. That was a that was a baseball handshake. Oh yeah. That's nice. That's good stuff. He is a tireless worker who just continued last year picking the brain of of Reggie Raglan. Pretty good brain to pick. They're going to rugby style this one, try to keep it away from Xavier and Marks. Down at the 37 yard line. 27 yard punt from Kent State. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Gatorade, the proven sports fuel. That's a good kind of construction. I had to make an update to the Walk of Champions on the uh, north side of Bryant Denny Stadium. 14 and 1 last year. Nick Saban talked about it this week. He said, You would think we're dead and gone after we lost Ole Miss. Everybody gave up on us. They haven't lost since. And Nick Saban, second only to Bear Bryant in national championships as deemed by the AP and coaches poll since 1936. Pretty good company there. Blake Barnett in at quarterback now for Alabama. Working behind a new offensive line. B.J. Emmons rips one off. Hey, Cole, you know, one of the guys we ran into at the facility this week was a guy who had a hand in a national championship. Barrett Jones, the uh, academic All-American of the year 2012. Great offensive lineman for this Alabama program. How about this from Barrett Jones, former Alabama center guard tackle, started at three different positions, winning three different national championships. <laughs> I don't know if there's another player in college football that can claim that. That is a, that is an amazing stat. I'm going to say there's not. Well, he was. A, I loved watching him play. It was great to spend yeah. some time with him. First and ten. And B.J. Emmons with the carry. Another true freshman getting some work today for Lane Kiffin and Coach Saban. E.J. Edmonds from Morganton, North Carolina, Freedom High School. Great, good size for a true freshman, six foot, 206 pounds. Love his body lean, his quickness. 
ESPN.com had him ranked as the number one running back in the country coming out of high school. Hench is in motion. And they'll go to the tight end out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Hale Henches out of Halias High School, where his grandpa Ray won a pair of state championships and coached there for 33 years. He also coached the golf team. And one of his golfers was this skinny kid who transferred in from Arkansas. Led him to a state championship in 1983. His name was John Daly. <laughs> Pretty good. Grandpa Ray, by the way, will be playing in a tournament up in Birmingham this summer. He won the Missouri State Senior Games. He won the golf tournament, which was only 18 holes, by 16 strokes. Oh, my goodness. Hale said, I can't believe he's that good. He goes, I think, kind of think I'm a pretty good golfer. All my grandpa does is hit it straight, get it on the green, and make putts. I've never beaten him. Might have to wait a while. Be playing in the national senior games in Birmingham next summer. Grandpa Ray. Oh, timing was way off on that play. BJ Emmons and Trayvon Diggs collide. Timing was off on the jet sweep motion last week, and it led to a snap going directly to the wide receiver coming in motion who took it in for a touchdown. Twenty-five seconds left in the quarter. Be back to Tuscaloosa after this. Celebrating its 12th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. First down, Kent State. George Bolas, sophomore from Aurora, Ohio. Quarterback. Pestered and flicks it incomplete. An extra pushing and shoving in the tail end. Trey Harrell, freshman from Metairie, Louisiana, mixing it up with uh, one of the Alabama defenders. I think it might have been Levi Wallace on the outside. <laughs> well, I tell you, they have substituted. There are a lot of new players. New players at every position for Alabama defensively. One yard gain. Mac Wilson who has a touchdown catch today, also has a tackle now. Through three quarters of play in Tuscaloosa, Alabama dominating Kent State to the tune of a 48 to nothing lead. This will be the 62nd consecutive win against an unranked team for Alabama. Alabama's defense has been on the field for 34 plays today. The first one went 47 yards, the longest gain of the season for Kent State. Since then, they've held the Golden Flashes to 38 yards over 33 plays. I'd say they made an adjustment. They go on the crossing route to Nick Holly out of the slot, and he's able to pick up a first down and into Alabama territory. Hootie Jones with a tackle. You've heard the Holly name a lot thus far today. Yeah. His brother Nate is his twin. They both played their high school ball in uh, Toledo at Whitmer High School. And when the defensive coordinator, Ben Needham, went to recruit the Holly kids, he showed up on campus and only had one scholarship available. He said, so I told Nick, the scholarship's for you. Meanwhile, his brother Nate, who you see there, the safety, he said, I told Nate, you could walk on. Nate almost came across the desk at me. He was so upset. I knew then that he was uh, what we're looking for in terms of defensive intensity. <laughs> Here they are as youngsters with their father. Been on the same field for a while now. As it turns out, the Saturday before signing day, a recruit backed out on Kent State, and so Nate was able to earn a scholarship 
got the very last one. And he's been a three-time all-conference performer since he's been on campus, probably four times. He finishes up his career as he's been playing. His brother Nick, wide receiver, running back, does a little bit of everything. They try to get him involved as much as possible in multiple ways. And you mentioned it's slot, wide receiver, running back, any way they can get him the football in space. One of six sets of twins in the FBS. Looking for the jet sweep. Alabama saw it coming. Raekwon James, sophomore out of John Curtis in New Orleans. Sensational program down there with great people. It's a loss of four. Christian Miller with attack. Ooh, what? You can substitute. You can go three, four levels deep on the depth chart for Alabama. It doesn't discount speed. And it, even with this group, you just can't get outside of them. Tom, you mentioned Raekwon James. I'm looking at Raekwon Davis from Alabama, 99, 6'7", 315 pound freshman in the game at defensive tackle. Yeah, that dude was on the sideline at practice the other day, <laughs> and I said he won't be standing there long. Wow. This is Cavius Price slices his way against second and third team players. Keith Holcomb the stop. Something cold that we talked about when we left practice Thursday that it is one of the most disciplined college football practices you will ever see. Even the second and third stringers are watching intently from the sideline. And folks listening to this might say, well, of course, it's a Nick Saban coach team. I don't know, Cole, that everyone really appreciate how rare that is in college football. I think you have to have been around a lot of college football practices to understand it. I saw nobody on the sidelines, no walk-ons, no ball boys, no managers even messing around the entire practice. It was laser focused on every level to every single player. On fourth and five, they convert it, and it's a huge gain for Will Matthews, who takes it inside the 10-yard line. 35 yards on the strike to convert the fourth down, and that is the second longest play of the day for Kent State. Well, nice job. You see the middle of the field when the safety split oh, there's a nice crease and that's one of the weaknesses of the defense is right in the middle when the safety split to go outside on the hash mark well timed by George Bolas the quarterback that was his longest completion of the season small sample size eighth play of this drive Alabama's defense trying to hold on to the shutout Will Matthews is the running back Matthews hit Maybe got a yard. Holcomb there to bring him down. Raekwon Davis. Six, seven of him. He got two guys with helmets locked up. Joshua Frazier being one and Chase Van Hoff. Yep. Back up center. Everything sorted out. We can get back to playing football here. Like two Rams getting their horns stuck on a mountaintop. <laughs> Ten and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Alabama with a shutout. Can they hold on to it? Second and goal. Play action. Bolus flushed. Throws incomplete. Side judge was open. Looked like Anthony Jennings. With a quick pressure on Bolas to flush him out of the pocket. And hey, what? Between he and Tim Williams, they really, really think they've got the next super player off the edge in Anthony Jen Jennings. Fast, he can do it all. Really played well as a young player. Tenth the play of the drive. Red shirt freshman. Third and goal. Kent State and wants a timeout. Paul Haynes came running on the field. Timeout. Kent State. It is their front guard timeout of the pack. When we come out of this timeout, Kent State will be looking for its first, first score, facing a third and goal. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. Proud supporters of college football. It's good to be in good hands and in part by Gatorade the proven sports fuel 
Well, if Kent State wants to find the end zone, this is their best opportunity, trailing 48-0. About five minutes into the fourth quarter, they're facing a third and goal. Empty backfield. George Bullis looking to throw. Pumps, lobs, incomplete. You take the points down 48. Or do you keep the offense on the field, Andre? I think you try to score you know, with the offense. The field goal's not going to do much for you. You're still working as a football team. Gives you an, a, you know, an extra play to try to work on something, a, a red zone play. Hey, what a They're going to go for it. Oh. It's, it's too high. Fourth and goal to keep the offense on the field, and the Alabama defense has an opportunity to keep the shutout intact. Well, Haynes told us this week defense wins championships. Can his offense score? Five wide. Bowl is flushed. Turns it upfield. He is in. Touchdown, Kent State on the sophomore scramble. Well, that's some good stuff from Bolus. Just the will to want to get in the end zone. Getting chased and what an effort. See if his knee was down before he got the ball to the pylon. That's a touchdown. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under review. In addition to the pylon, the other question is where is the ball when his knee is down and is it breaking the play? I'm not sure that really shows you that the knee is completely down. I mean, it looks there, looks like it from there, but you can't speculate. All it has to do is to break the plane, yeah. which is the very front of that paint job. I'm going to say that this is going to stand. I think it stands. Steve Landis is our replay official here today, assisted in the booth by coordinator of officials Steve Shaw and a bevy of folks back at the video center in Birmingham as well. Deontay Thompson banged up. The officials are looking at this exact screen that we're showing you. You see the DB Sport HD replay in the bottom of the corner. This is what they are looking at as they are looking at it. And they'll rock it forward and try to see when his knee was down and where the ball was when it was down. So the officials and their help in the booth running those replays. I don't I just don't think you can really tell. There's not video evidence that actually will could you know uh, enough to overturn the decision on the field. This be have to be indisputable video evidence. It was fourth and goal. If they ruled that he was stopped, then that would be a turnover on downs. That one looks like the ball has not broken the plane. But to your point, Andre, the question is, how clear can you be that the knee was down at that point? After further review, the runner was down short of the goal line. The ball will go over on downs. It will be Alabama's ball, first and 10. And so therefore, the shutout remains intact. Take six off the board for Kent State. And that score and that review means a lot more to some people than it does others. Ten oh two remaining here in the fourth quarter. It'll be Alabama football when we bring you back to Tuscaloosa right after this. Alabama's hitting him with a sledgehammer today. 48-0. After a turnover on downs, they've got it just outside the end zone. And Cooper Bateman is now the third quarterback to take a snap for Alabama today. Under center. We'll hand it off. They'll get it out of the end zone. And a nice run to create some space. Derek Gore with his first carry. Bateman, junior from Murray, Utah, 
out of Cottonwood High School. Part of the quarterback competition, obviously, last year. Back to Gore. Tackle by Najee Murray. And that's my point right there. You got Gore, you got BJ Emmons. Talked about this earlier. When you're on the look squad trying to service the defense, you, know, you got backs like this coming at you. Gore out of Coffeeville Community College, JC transfer, and Emmons, the true freshman. I mean, that's, you are working when these two guys come in the game. On play action. Able to get it out to Gore. Colt? Tom, we saw some great protection on that play, but I was impressed with the push in the middle of the line of scrimmage, especially backed up down inside the one-yard line, just two, three inches away from the goal line. I walked down to take a look at it. But that's the value of having a young man like J.C. Hassenauer coming in at center. He got some meaningful reps against Texas A&M two years ago. He's a guy that's been in the lineup. He understands the program, the terminology. He and Cooper Bateman have been around the program for a while. So valuable not to have to worry about center quarterback exchange in those situations. Thank you, Cole. Diggs on the jet sweep. Loses two yards. A boat Boyd Bay and on the stop for Kent State. Valuable reps as you try to continue to build depth, as Cole's talking about. Eisenhower, and you never know when at some point in the season you know, he'll be called to give you give you some work at center if an injury or two occur, and you got to have somebody ready. Incomplete. Alabama will punt it away, and that will bring J.K. Scott onto the field for the Crimson Tide. How about those kicks? I know Cole's big on sneakers. Right. We're going nuclear green on the uh, soles of J.K. Scott's Nikes. It's funny. Punters, kickers, they're also they're funny about their shoes, man. He's got to fit just right. Coming from a guy who was showing off his new shoes on the way in the booth today. <laughs> You're going comfort and style am, at the same time. On the fan. All comfort at this point. Scott out of J.K. Mullen High School in Denver gets off the beauty. Oh, nice punt. Fair catch taken by Holly. 52 yard boot by J.K. Scott. Had a little juice on those kicks. Let's take a look at today's Capital One Impact performance. Freshman running back Joshua Jacobs. Career day, 11 carries, 97 yards. A couple average, of first quarter touchdowns. Average just under nine yards per carry, but dazzling in the open field. You make you miss. You can run with power. Catches the ball well out of the backfield. See there the shiftiness on his way to his first touchdown of his career. Came out of his shoe on that run. Replace an injured Damian Harris, and easy to see why the coaching staff is so high on Jacobs. May have earned more playing time going forward. New quarterback in the game for Kent State. Colin Reardon is a very interesting story for Kent State. He had been their starting quarterback for a good chunk of last season, but lost the job late. And the coaches called him in in the spring and basically suggested to him that he transfer. They said, you're not going to play quarterback here anymore. We've got Malik Mitchell. We've got George Bullis. We've got Justin Agner. And quite frankly, there's not any space for you. So if you want to transfer, we certainly understand. And Reardon lost it. He said, what are you talking about? I'm a golden flash. I came here. I'm invested in this program. I'm not leaving. I don't want to leave. So they found a space for him at wide receiver. It's also the holder. 
But the coaching staff said it was, yeah, it was a tough scenario to discuss the guy who had been starting quarterback and to suggest transferring. But we, you know, they wanted what's best for the kid. They wanted him to find playing time. But they said the silver lining is that we learned how much the program meant to him. That's tough. You don't ever want to, just as a player, you don't want to have that conversation. Because players always think they have a chance, whether it's by just hard work or if, if an injury happens, you know, you're called upon to step in. Two years, he was a starting quarterback under Paul Haynes. He had back issues that ended his season last year and missed the spring. He'll take off with it. Keith Holcomb in on the stop. He stopped short of the first down to gain, and it will leave fourth and one. Well, good for Colin Reardon to have an opportunity yeah. here in Tuscaloosa to get some snaps. And going forward, if Malik Mitchell is indeed injured, remember he hasn't returned since he was sacked, and they want depth at quarterback, Colin Reardon might just find himself back at that position. Tell you what, he's got a memory that he'll have the rest of his life that he suited up and played and played quarterback in Tuscaloosa, Alabama against the Crimson Tide. Kent State will punt it away. Already one punt return for a touchdown for Xavier Marks. 10 300 meter speed on display again. He won't lose this one in the sun. Takes it on a hop and immediately met by Holly. And that'll push us to a break after a 42 yard punt and one on the return for Marks. 48 0 Bama. What's well, a great quarterback history here under Nick Saban? First year starters having tremendous success McElroy, McCarron, Sims, and Coker as first year starters achieved a level of success that most quarterbacks would only dream of. McElroy won the national title in 09, McCarron in 11. Sims got him in the college football playoff loss in the semis, and then Jake Coker, first year starter last year, and they won it all That's again. Some pretty good, uh, pretty good production out of first year quarterbacks. David Cornwell is now in at quarterback for Alabama, and they're running a first down. So the question is, can Jalen Hurts do that? And can you match what Greg McElroy was, has accomplished? And I think this was waiting for me in my hotel room. <laughs> Maybe the most impressive accomplishment in Greg McElroy's career. He's now a cover model. How about that? Sweet. What he got on the jacket? <laughs> Not my flavor, but if it <laughs> works for him. <laughs> You pick up your, your edition of Tuscaloosa <laughs> magazine and read all about Greg McElroy, our good buddy. Where's he today? He's got another good one. Well, on paper, he's got Ole Miss Georgia right now. It's 45-14. So Cornwell is the fourth different quarterback to take snaps today for Alabama. Highly, highly recruited coming out of high school. And it just goes to show you that it's not guaranteed when you sign or you ink somewhere that, uh, you know, there's not going to be competition. They're waiting and after. So you come to a program like Alabama, it is always competition. You're just not next in line, and it, all of a sudden you get to take your turn. You've got to win the job. Third and five and a big run for Gore. So Lane Kiffin has played four different quarterbacks today, and we had a chance to talk to him yesterday about his future in the coaching industry. And I asked him, what are you looking for in a head coaching opportunity? And he was quick to point out, listen, it's not something I'm thinking about right now. He said, but big picture, I want to make sure wherever I end up or when I end up somewhere else, essentially, I want to be with an athletic director in a department that's dedicated to winning. Once you're at Alabama and you see the resources that are poured into this program, I think it would be really hard to go somewhere, yeah. especially I mean, the SEC is one thing, but especially a team or a program further down the ladder without comparable resources. <laughs> Th that being said, nobody does it like Alabama. Yeah, well, if he's looking for a place that uh, resembles Alabama, there's only about two or three in the country. 
with a, and from a resources standpoint and all the things that surround this program. <laughs> Texas maybe one, yeah. Michigan being the other. I don't think uh, well, Michigan I'd, job's opening up anytime soon. And I'd say Charlie, this, Charlie Strong seems to have Texas going, so that one's not going to open. Well, I'd say this about Lane Kiffin, where he is now versus where he was when he got here, and, and he was quick to point out that He's got a very interesting background. He was with Pete Carroll from age right. 24 to 30, and then his own head coach, and, and now with Nick Saban. And those two head coaches do it on very end, different ends of the spectrum. But Dan Wolken had an article this week in USA Today where he mentioned schools the likes of Fresno State and San Diego State. No. I, I think based on what he's accomplished here, those schools are way in the rearview mirror yeah, for Lane Yeah, no Lake doubt Gepard. about it. I mean, you, you could throw... Uh, that schools on the same level, Ohio State, Oregon. That now that might be a, a place for uh, for Lane Kiffin, Oregon, and he's he's kind of learned the Oregon way since he's been here at Alabama and how to go fast and create exciting offenses. Avery Reed with the carry. Cole, do you think another SEC school would be interested in hiring Lane Kiffin, whether they have an opening this year or within the next couple of years anyone in this league I think it would be much more than interest Tom I think it's a very realistic possibility you look at the resume who he's worked under where he's been what he's done it's still such a young age he's a guy who can come in and give you longevity at that position and I having to deal with the Alabama fans on a radio show every single morning continuously try to tell people he is underappreciated as a play caller it's the third consecutive first year quarterback that he's dealt with here for the Crimson Tide and they continue to have success and by the way doing it with a true freshman trigger man this year well Alabama gets the job done today against Nick Saban's alma mater 2 and 0 now against Kent State and for the Crimson Tide they continue an impressive run. Nobody has more wins in consecutive order against unranked teams than Alabama's 62. It's a 16-game win streak for Nick Saban and the defending national champions, a home win against Kent State. We've got more coming your way from Tuscaloosa following Bama's 48-0 win over Kent State. Our final score, Alabama takes care of Kent State 48 to nothing is the final the defending national champs undefeated 4-0 on the season they've got Kentucky coming up next a Kentucky team that they've never lost at home to and I think the only question Andre Ware with Alabama was could they put forth a complete effort today and could they get meaningful reps for their freshman quarterback yeah I think the answer to that question is uh, yes on all fronts you talk about the offensive line tremendous offensive line play Jalen Hurts came out efficient with the football, certainly both running and passing. Blake Barnett came in the game, threw a nice touchdown pass to O.J. Howard. So you get the tight end position going, the offensive line. They found some running backs that could yeah. step in and do some things. And uh, I'll tell you what, defensively, they're still as good as any team in the country. Defense pitches the shutout. You know, Nick Saban must be happy about that. For more moments ago, Cole Kublik caught up with Alabama's head coach. Coach Saban, you said you wanted to see a full game from your team today. Were you pleased with their effort for four quarters? I sure was. I was really proud of the way our guys came out and you know, sort of tried to play to a standard, and that's what we've been trying to get all year. And we got to play a lot of players in the second half, which was good, and I'm sure they'll learn a lot from their experience. What does it do for your program to be able to get guys experience, like you mentioned, that don't really get to get in games very often? Well, we have a lot of guys that we really need to sort of work so that we can use them down the road and hopefully this experience that they gain today will be helpful to them and uh, we like to play a lot of players and we probably played as, as many freshmen this year as anybody in the country. Thank you coach. All right, thank you. Now, Alabama's freshmen seem to be just a little bit different from everybody else's freshmen. They dominate today. 48 to nothing is the final. More rest before they take on Kentucky. Once again our final. Alabama 48. Kent State nothing. Coming up next, it's SCC Now. Now let's take it to Peter Burns back in the studio.